I'm Melissa with Sentimental Salvage and Design and today we are going to be turning this fun ornate frame. It's too big for me to show you the whole thing but we are going to be turning this into a really fun pegboard. So we'll be decoupaging on the pegboard but first let's get this frame painted. I'm using Fusion's Ash which is a really dark charcoal, almost black. So let's get at that. Okay, so step two is now I'm going to paint the pegboard. So this is just your normal pegboard you can buy at Home Depot. I've cut it to the right size and I'm going to use a roller with just a, a sponge roller to paint it. It's just easier and you end up with less paint in the holes, which is ideal. I'm going to be using um, DIY Paints White Swan. It has really good coverage and it works really well under decoupage paper. So that's what I'm going to go with here. And this is super simple. We are just going to paint it on this pegboard to give it that underpainting of decoupage or for decoupage rather. When you paint under your decoupage paper white, it really lets that image pop on your decoupage paper. So that's what we wanna go with. I need more paint. I'm going to be using one of the new, newer decoupage papers from the last release called Etched Countryside. I think it's going to look gorgeous with the bra black, black, black frame. And I haven't used it before, so I'm excited. I have done decoupage on pegboard before. Uh, if you've been in the store, you know that I have one that covers up my breaker box, my electrical panel, because they're always kind of ugly. And it's kind of in a very visible spot. So I built a big wooden box behind oh. it or around it rather. And then I painted up an ornate frame and did a decoupage pegboard on it and hinged it to the, to the box and it covers it up perfectly. Okay. So now let's dry this a bit and we'll put another thinner coat on top just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. Okay. So now this time I'm going to add some paint. Oh, this is my new experiment. These are those new Dawn dish soap. There's the little squeezy bottles and they work awesome for paint, you guys. Awesome. Love them. No leaking. Perfect. 
Okay, this is just a little bit of water because I want this coat to be just a little bit thinner. It doesn't need to be full strength. I'm really pushing the paint out of this roller to get it all out. It's one thing about using rollers, they suck up so much paint, which is good, but I always feel like not getting as much out as you can is kind of a waste. Perfect. Okay, so now this has to dry. And then we're gonna come along with our decoupage paper and we will get this laid out on here. And you'll see, I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna use the roller to apply the decoupage medium. I haven't done it that way before, but maybe we'll give that a go. All right, I'll be back. Okay, we are back. So this is the decoupage paper that I want to use. This is Etched Countryside. This is one of the brand new ones. And I think it's going to look awesome with that black frame. So let's get going on that. This is all primed. Well, it's not primed. It's just underpainted white. I used DIY paint in White Swan, in case you missed that earlier. And... We are going to use this paper on it. I think it's going to be a perfect background. So now we just have to kind of plan what we want. I kind of like this background. There's a little bit of topography here, a stamp. There's some little people over here that I think I'm going to just I think we're just going to wipe them off. What do you think? Trying to see what this looks like on camera. You can't really fit the whole thing. So there's the top edge. So basically, I think that'll look really nice. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. So I just wanna make sure that that's kind of straight. Looks fairly straight. I'm just eyeballing it on this edge. I can kind of see. Looks pretty straight to me. So on this edge, I'm going to cut this instead of working with this whole sheet. Because if I cut this off, I'll have a little bit to work with still on another project. But I need a super sharp X-Acto knife to do this. All right, put that aside. Use it on something else. Okay, so I'm just going to use this pizza pan 
to put my decoupage medium on instead of the tray because it's handy and I'm going to do kind of in pieces so I'm going to do this stripe where is my decoupage? I'm going to use the clear patina. Also from DIY paint. You can use any kind of decoupage medium that you prefer. I have two that are my go-tos and that is DIY paints, clear patina and fusions, decoupage and transfer gel. Those are my two go-tos when it comes to decoupage and I use them interchangeably. Um, I like them better. The decoupage gel is a little, it's thicker. It's like a gel. Um, I like them better than Mod Podge. Mod Podge I found very gluey, so it's hard to move around. The ones that I've tried anyways. So that's just my reasoning for the whole thing. Okay. I'm a Y person, so I'm going to pass on the Y. Why I do it that way. My roller is damp because I just washed it because I used it for the white. So that should help this flow a little bit better and I'm hoping this works. I've never used a roller to apply decoupage medium before. So this is a whole new, but I think this actually is going to work pretty good for this. Okay, so I'm going to move that up there and let's just lay this down. Perfect. And you can use saran wrap. I have these little vinyl squeegees that work really good for big flat surfaces like this. This felt just helps alleviate friction so that you're not running your hand over it too much and causing causing an issue. My table's not big enough. Okay. good for giving you a nice even coat for sure. spritz that a little bit on the edges just so that the paper doesn't pull so much. Almost out. Okay, I'm going to do the rest. Remember you want full coverage so you don't have air bubbles. So really make sure you're getting everywhere. See how it pulls because the center is wet and the outsides are not. So your paper kind of stretches in weird spots. And I found to always be way more gentle 
when you're decoupaging paper that doesn't have a lot of pigment on it because it's a lot weaker. So don't play with that too much. I learned that the hard way on papers where you, you think you're just, you're doing your normal thing and it tears. Okay, I don't have my saran wrap handy or food wrap or I'm just going over it with this because I kind of it's kind of my preferred method of smoothing out is using plastic wrap Okay, so now I'm just going to go along and I'm going to give it some stress relief here by just cutting in random spots because as this dries, it will shrink. So that'll just help me a little bit. Okay, so now I have to go and I have to put a full coat over the whole piece and I think I can do it with the roller still almost out completely So remember with decoupage, you're sandwiching paper in between two clear coats, basically. Whatever your decoupage medium is, you want to make sure that you're sandwiching your paper in between two coats of that decoupage medium. I think I'm going to have just enough for this. Okay, now the fun part. Now I found last time I did this that a normal everyday pencil works perfectly. So what you have to do is while this is wet, you need to go through and you need to poke your holes and it's easier when your paper's wet because you get a nice clean hole through the paper. If you wait and it's dry or you notice it starts to dry, it actually tears and it makes it kind of messy looking. So I like to do this while it's still wet. And a pencil works perfect. I just kind of poke it in and I just give it a little kind of a quarter turn. Just kind of helps clean it. And that is it for this stage. Very exciting. So I'm going to continue with this. Um, you guys don't need to uh, watch the monotony of poking holes through paper. So I'll speed it up and we'll get it all done and we'll be back to see how this looks in the frame.
So all the holes have been poked. That is a little bit hard on the hand after a while. So now what I'm going to do is I am just going to clean up these edges. And if you remember how that goes, I just take a sanding block and just sand down the edge and away from the paper. And that gives you this nice clean edge. I'm just going to do that all the way around. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do that all the way around and I'll back. be back. So this is all, this edge is all nice and clean now. And I am going to put, because this is pegboard and you're going to be using it, I'm going to put an extra coat of the clear patina on the top of it. Um, this is the stuff that I'm using. I had to, I refilled my squeezy bottle. And I put it in these squeeze bottles because I use this so much. It's just, it's easier for me to just squirt out a little bit that I need. So that's why I put them in there. But this is the stuff. So if you're looking for it, it is available on my website. Um, and I really like it. Highly recommend it. For doing decoupage or... You can also make a custom glaze with this. Um, I use the dark and decrepit quite a bit, but if there's any other color of glaze that you want to make, you can add paint to the clear patina and it works awesome for that. Um, I was going to say something else and I don't remember. But anyways, so I'm using my trusty little pizza pan again and my roller because it works good for this as I've discovered. And I'm only using the roller because of the little holes. You know how when you're painting over something like this with a brush, you end up with more paint in those little holes than you do where you want it. So I'm trying to avoid that. So this is kind of... Avoiding that problem. And it's giving me nice, even coverage. And this foam roller is giving me a bunch of little air bubbles, but they all seem to go away, so I'm good. Okay, so now once this dries, we are going to see what it looks like in that frame. And we'll go from there. Okay, so here we go. Here's our frame. And I think that looks awesome. But I want to highlight this detail on the frame a little bit. So I think I'm going to go over it with, I haven't decided yet, either a wax or probably just the metallic in the silver or the pearl metallic, I guess, would be what I'm gonna use. Okay, so I have dug out two of my metallics. This one is metallic brushed steel. This is by Fusion. And this one is the metallic pearl. So this one's super bright. So I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm going to aim for that bright yet. So I'm going to try this one first and I just use my finger and we're just going to, oh, I think this one's going to be good. It's just a really subtle highlight of these details. I'm going to zoom that in so you guys can see. And I'm 
just lightly brushing it over these high points. And see how that really gets all those details to pop now? And that's perfect. It's really, it's subtle. It's not like crazy, crazy bold. Just to kind of zhuzh it up a little bit. And same with, there's like a, almost like a beaded line here. I'm going to hit that a little bit too to highlight. Okay, so now let's see what this is going to look like. And I'm just going to glue this in. I was gonna make it removable, but there really isn't any reason to be able to remove it. So I'm going to glue it in. And I think that is going to be a perfect little pegboard for bedroom and office, the kitchen, anywhere. So I'm going to glue that in and then we're going to be all done. And I will show you a picture of it completed. Thanks for hanging out with me to do this pegboard. And I hope you found it inspiring to be able to do something like this yourself. Don't forget the pegboard itself is just, it comes from Home Depot. You can buy it in the four by four sheets or two, two foot by four foot sheets. It's super easy to cut. Um, you could probably cut it with an X-Acto knife if you make a bunch of passes, but I just use the table saw and I just cut it to size. And this is just a frame from some old artwork and you can use anything. But the decoupage paper is the magic here. It totally changes that boring old pegboard into something awesome. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.